Recently in Overwatch, there was added a new character called the Wrecking Ball, and this guy has a pretty neat ability to smash the ground and create a sphere that deals damage. So in today's video, we are going to learn how to create that, and I'm going to have two ways of doing it. Actually, not of doing it, but two effects that can be applied on different actors and objects. So let's see how we can do it. First, I'm going to show you uh, what it can do. So. The first thing is that after I'm going to, as you can see, there are line traces pointing at the ground every second, right? So every second there is like four, there are like four or ten line traces. And then here, after I'm going to activate my power, you can see that these cubes are going to get, are going to get impulsed upwards as well as these ones, right? And then. What we can do, we can destroy them too. So let me unplug this from here and plug this in here. All right? And now I'm going to be able to destroy them. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. So I'm going to delete all of these. I'm going to delete here the function and all these variables. All right, so first let's start by creating a custom event. So add custom event and I'm going to call this line trace ground representing that there is going to be a line trace that is going to point at the ground and maybe it is going to hit something so what I'm going to get from here is a line trace by channel not by profile by channel okay so line trace by channel and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get a scene that is located at the bottom of my character and I suggested to do that as well. And then get the up vector as well, get the word location. Okay. Plug that into the start. So the line trace is going to start from the word location of the scene. Then get the up vector and let's multiply this by a float. So this is going to represent the length of the line trace. So let's put here 600. And now let's look a little bit to the get up vector. So, if you're going to get from the scene, get down vector, which we would need in this case because we want to point to the ground, not to the sky, you won't be able to. So what we need to do with the up vector, we want to multiply this with a minus 600 value, so with a negative value, to make it go in the other direction. Then let's add these vectors up, and let's plug that into the end, setting up the direction and the location of the line trace. Then let's put here persistent and maybe change the trace color to blue. All right. Now let's get our event begin play. So get event begin play. And let's call our custom event. So call ground line trace ground. All right. And let's play. So currently you can see there that there is a blue dot, which means that this is working, but there are no other line traces spawned around me or any, anywhere else. That is because this is only going to run once. So let's delete this and we are going to use a node that we used in the last episode as well, last tutorial. So that is going to be set timer by function name. So what is it going to do is that is going to call the same function or custom event if we're going to check looping and we're going to set the time for the specified amount of time. So if I'm going to put here 0 0.1 and check looping, every 0 0.1 seconds the function name or the custom event is going to be called. So I'm going to copy the line trace ground function right here and paste it into the function name and let's see if this is working. So as you can see right now, there are multiple dots that are following me. That means that this is working pretty good. Okay, now what we want to do is to get out of the return value. So get the branch, plug the return value in the condition and these two pins. So what we want to do here is that we want to create a boolean. I'm going to call this can smash ground. So pretty much if we can activate uh, the smashing ground action, which is called pile drive. So as well, I can call that the same name, or you can choose whatever you want. So if this is true, 
we don't want to be able to smash it. If this is going to be false, we want to be able to smash the ground. Okay, let's compile and make sure everything is all right. Now what I want to do is to get the jump action mapping. So action, action event jump. You can get one of those by going into edit, project settings, let it load, then go to input, make sure you're on action mappings, click on the plus button, give it a name, and make sure you have spacebar or whatever button you want. So everything is pretty much customizable. All right, now, out of the input action jump, what I want to do is that I want to launch my character, let's say by 1000 units in the air, and it's not a normal jumping system, because I can just press space and I'm going to continue jumping, but it's what I want for today's tutorial. As well, what you can do for a normal jumping system, you can get event on landed, Okay, and here have a do once and reset it when we are going to land, but I don't want that. Okay, and also I'm going to have here Z override. Okay, now, th now that we can actually see if we can smash the ground or not, let's see how we can actually smash it. So we are going to get here let's say use, so use is an, is an action event bind it to my button, so you can get one of those just as I, you saw before. So out of pressed, we want to check, so do a branch. So we want to check if we can smash the ground or not. If this is true, what we want to do is that we want to get our character movement and set gravity scale. Okay, and just set your 10 or 15, let's say the middle number Okay, so the normal gravity scale of the character is going to be 1 and you want to set it to be, let's say, as you can see here, 12.5 because we want to fall much faster. So if I'm going to use it, you can see that I'm going to now fall from there almost in no time. Okay, but this is not entirely correct because if you're going to use the power up, we won't be able to do this. we won't be able to jump anymore as you can see because our gravity scale is pretty big. So what we want to do is to get event on land on landed actually and we want here to have another boolean and we're going to call this smashed ground and we are going to set this to be true after we checked if the can smash ground is true. So th this means that we smashed the ground and we can check some other variables too. Okay, event on landed, what we want to do is to check if we smash the ground or not. And if we did, we want to set smash ground to be false. And then what we want to do is to copy the gravity scale. Okay, just copy it and make it to be one once again. Okay, now let's just align this, so straight on the connections. And now everything should be working fine about the core mechanic. You can see, I can just do this as much as I want. But now let's see how we can destroy or give impulse upwards to these cubes. So after we set the gravity scale to be the spe this specified number, we want to create a multi-sphere line, tra multi-sphere trace. So let's get a multi-sphere trace by channel. Okay, let me drag this down here. And what we want to do for the start and for the end, we want to get the actor location. So get actor location and just plug this in both. This is because we want our radius to have the start and the end in the same point. And that means the actor location that it is going to be when we are going to activate our power up. Alright, so let's set a radius right here. I'm going to set 1000 units. Remember this is customizable as I said before. Let's set the draw debug type to be persistent and trace color, let's make it a green color. And set the trace hit color to be yellow. Alright, now out of the return value we are going to do a branch. Okay, plug these two pins. 
And now, if this is going to be true, we want to get out from the out hits for each loop. And out of the array element, we want to break hit result. So what it's going to do is that we are going to, because this is a multi-sphere trace, we are going to possibly have multiple objects that are going to get hit. That means that we are going to need to use a for each loop to check each, each actor that we hit some stuff. So we are just going to get the for each loop as I said, break the hit result and now let's check if our hit actor has any tags. So has tag. If this is going to be true, we are going to continue to run the script, but first let's set the tag. So here, all my cubes are having the same tag which is going which is destroyable. So if I'm going to search here for tags, you can see destroyable. So I'm just going to copy it just to make sure that I'm not going to misspell it. Alright? And if this is true, we are going to have two parts, the one with the impulse and one with the destroy actor. So let's just do the destroy actor first, because this is the easiest. We just want to get a hit actor once again and destroy it. Okay, so I'm just going to add some reroute nodes. And let's see if this is working now. Okay. And it seems that it's not working, because there is something wrong happening. Alright, I know what is happening wrong right now. So the problem is that we are going to do the line trace once we used our power up, but we don't want that, we want to do it once we land once again. So let's plug this in here, not in the power up, and let's see if this is now working. Right? So as you can see, the actors got destroyed and there's nothing around me anymore, and it seems that these cubes are falling. Okay, so seems that I rotated them somehow, but doesn't matter. Okay, and now let's do the impulse part. So I'm just going to unplug this from here, but I'm not going to delete it. So if this is true, we want to get the hit component and get is simulating physics. If this is going to be true, we are going to get a hit component and we are going to add impulse. Okay, out of the true plug this into the add impulse and now here in the Z let's set 400 okay and let's see if this is working so it seems that currently it is not working so let's see why it is not so let's just have here velocity change and as well let's add some real nodes let's make sure that all of these are simulating physics Okay, so it seems that they are simulating physics. And let's print a string as well, just to make sure that something is happening before and after. Okay, so now we are going to use it. Okay, and now it seems that this one got impulsed. Let's see what about these two. So as you can see, both got impulsed upwards. So this is pretty much all for today's video. I just wanted to create this quick and simple mechanic that everyone can implement in their games that is going to make the game pretty fun. So I hope that you liked the tutorial and that you enjoyed it and if you did don't forget to leave a thumbs up and also subscribe if you are new here to stay up to date with new videos and thanks for watching, see you next time!